In this tutorial, we'll talk about some more tools to help you organize story. You already know lanes a little bit. Lanes are meant for major storylines. A major plot line or a major character arc would get its own lane. Subplots might also get their own lane, for example, a story that just comes back once in a while. And if you have alternating A, B, and C stories like many TV shows, they'd each be their own lane. But don't get stuck on categorizing your story. If you're not sure, just create a miscellaneous lane and sort it later. You create lanes by either right-clicking in the whiteboard and selecting New Lane, or by dragging in a lane from the toolbar. We'll talk about the options later, so we'll just give it a name. You rearrange lanes by dragging the header up and down. And you collapse them by clicking the triangle. If you have a lot of lanes, you can filter them. Just select some lanes and either select to solo them, which shows only them, or hide them. And show all lanes to get back. Next, you'll have noticed these stacks of beats, which are called groups. Groups, first of all, make the layout a lot neater. When you place beats directly in the whiteboard, they end up scattered in order to keep time going left to right. Well, a group is a small pocket where time goes vertically, where you can arrange many sequences like a list. This is a lot more compact, so you can see a lot more story on one screen. More importantly, groups allow you to understand a run of beats as a single plot unit. For example, a bank robbery, and a getaway, and a little section where they fight each other. Each of them contains multiple beats, but we get to handle them as a unit. So if I now want the fight to happen between the bank robbery and the getaway, I just use the push tool to open up a gap, move the whole fight over there, and close the old gap. This way, we're handling the story from a higher level than the individual events. To create groups, simply click beats together on the top or bottom edges. And then I like to drag the groups to the top so it becomes like a Trello board. Then each column is a mini sequence within the story, and I can drag beats around between them. You can also create a group by dragging one in from the bottom or via the right click menu. And you can turn a bunch of separate beats into a group by long pressing, selecting all of them, and then right click and convert to group. And I'll again drag it to the top. While groups are meant to be mostly vertical, you can still use the push tool inside of them. You need that for inner cutting. If I want this beat down here to happen in between these two beats, I simply command or control drag inside the group to shift everything to the right, and then I can place the beat in between. The final layout tool is blocks. Blocks are like groups, but bigger, and again allow you to understand larger sections of plot as a single unit. They especially help you understand your story as you zoom out, because the titles and layout are always clear. One of the main uses for blocks is to divide individual storylines into sections. So here an accident happens, then there's everything in the hospital, and then there's a whole thing where they try to change the past. Don't confuse this with act breaks, which is a separate feature with major dividers you can move around. Instead, think of each storyline having its own inner structure. If we were doing Ghostbusters, we'd have the thing on the top of the building, and then we'd have the Marshmallow Man thing. But at the same time, we have the thing where Rick Moranis and Sigourney Weaver turn into dogs. Each storyline follows its own rhythm. 
There's something you have to do before you can use blocks because they aren't enabled by default. Each lane starts in freestyle mode, which just lets you place beats where you want. To use blocks, select a lane and switch it to using blocks. You have to approve it. Then to create blocks, just double click or right click or drag them in from the bottom. There are two things that are unusual about blocks. First, you're not free to place blocks anywhere. They snap into an automatic layout. This is because blocks grow and shrink as your story changes and need the ability to push each other out of the way. But you can change the stacking order by dragging them up or down. Secondly, if you move a block to the left or right, you have to confirm it. Moving a block is a huge change to your story. All of these beats will be threaded into whatever is happening in the new place in the story, and you don't want to do that by accident. Press Place to confirm the new location or cancel to revert. 